I will post this to the blog. It is, in my opinion, some of the finest work, some of the finest words to come from Martin Luther King Jr. There's a state rep in um, Houston named Sylvester Turner. Sylvester would be a self-proclaimed liberal or progressive, I guess he would say. And in 1989, I was a college student at the University of Houston. And Sylvester had been a uh, had been the speaker of the Senate there. I went on to be the student body president, so I was very involved with student politics. And Sylvester's name was one that had come up. Sylvester is a heck of a public speaker, and I'm a student of orators. And I was at the student union, and he was giving a speech in 1989. He ran for mayor shortly thereafter in in the 91 race. He and uh, Bob Lanier in the runoff, and then Lanier won, ousting the uh, five-term mayor, Kathy Whitmer. Sylvester would give a speech. He's a heck of a speech giver. He, he gave a speech from Shakespeare on the stump quite often, and he would quote these lines from Martin Luther King Jr. that spoke to me at that time, and they still speak to me at this, at this time. They're as good as anything he said. Not as widely known. But I think what we have to do in order to take back our country and take back our culture is if we're going to buy into the, into the notion that it takes a village, we're going to have to take over the village council. And that doesn't just mean politically. Young people in this country and particularly young black people in this country are being taught all the wrong things. And we can sit idly by because those teaching them the wrong things don't want you butting in. Or we can decide these young people deserve the truth. They deserve the same truth that the white suburban kids get. They deserve the same truth that white rural kids get. They deserve the same truth that is universal. And that is work hard and you'll get ahead. Life isn't fair. Be the best. When you get knocked down, get back up. Interestingly, that's the message of Martin Luther King. Not give me a set aside because I'm black. Not have a special day for me because I'm black. Not if I don't like the way things turn out, I'll accuse you of racism. That's crap. And if we don't man up and buck up and start teaching young people that the American dream is available to everybody, then we are complicit in creating a multi-generational underclass. And then those statistics that the Democrats love to throw out that they are responsible for, like black people today are far more likely to go to prison, be involved in drugs, teenage pregnancy. Yeah. Well, then why don't we start looking for some solutions instead of blaming white people? Why don't we start looking for solutions? What works and what doesn't? Best practices. Why don't we start daring to teach young black people that this is your country too, that if you'll work hard, you can be anything you want to be? I'll read you the speech. It was a speech to a group of students at Barrett Junior High School in Philadelphia on October 26, 1967. I want you to hear the message of go out and do it. Be the best. He says, I want to ask you a question, and that is, what is your life's blueprint? Whenever a building is constructed, you usually have an architect who draws a blueprint, and that blueprint serves as the pattern, as the guide, and a building is not well erected without a good, solid blueprint. I want to suggest some of the things that should begin your life's blueprint. Number one in your life's blueprint should be a deep belief in your own dignity, your worth, and your own somebodiness. Don't allow anybody to make you feel that you're nobody. Always feel that you count. Always feel that you have worth and always feel that your life has ultimate significance. Secondly, in your life's blueprint, you must have as the basic principle the determination to achieve excellence in your various fields of endeavor. Sounds like a Rush Limbaugh show, doesn't it? You're going to be deciding as the days, as the years unfold, what you will do in life, what your life's work will be. Set out to do it well. And I say to you, my young friends, doors are opening to you. 
doors of opportunities that were not open to your mothers and your fathers. And the great challenge facing you is to be ready to face these doors as they open. Wait a minute. Doors are opening? Shouldn't he be talking about Jim Crow laws and, and racism and slavery? What do you mean doors are opening? That can't happen in America. He goes on. Ralph Waldo Emerson, the great essayist, said in a lecture in 1871, if a man can write a better book or preach a better sermon or make a better mousetrap than his neighbor, even if he builds his house in the woods, the world will make a beaten path to his door. This hasn't always been true, but it will become increasingly true, and so I would urge you to study hard to burn the midnight oil. I would say to you, don't drop out of school. I understand all the sociological reasons, but I urge you that in spite of your economic plight, in spite of the situation that you're forced to live in, stay in school. And when you discover what you will be in your life, listen to this message, folks. This is important. And I hope every young black person in America can hear this message because this is what Martin Luther King was about. And when you discover what, will be in, what, will, what you will be in your life, set out to do it as if God Almighty called you at this particular moment in history to do it. I don't just, set out to, I don't just mean to set out to do a good job. Set out to do a good job that the living, the dead, and the unborn couldn't do it any better. If it falls your lot to be a street sweeper, sweep streets like Michelangelo painted pictures. Sweep streets like Beethoven composed music. Sweep streets like Leontine Price sings before the Metropolitan Opera. Sweep streets like Shakespeare wrote poetry. Sweep streets so well that all the hosts of heaven and earth will have to pause and say, here lived a great street sweeper who swept his job well. If you can't be a pine at the top of the hill... Be a shrub in the valley. Be the best little shrub on the side of the hill. Be a bush if you can't be a tree. If you can't be a highway, just be a trail. If you can't be a sun, be a star. For it isn't by size that you win or fail. Be the best of whatever you are. I hope every parent out there, every teacher out there, every role model and coach out there, every aunt and uncle, every grandparent, every steward of our young people will preach that message to young people. Whatever you look like, whatever your physical or mental limitations, whatever home you were built, you were born into, you live in the greatest nation on earth, endowed with, by God with incredible talents. You can be anything you want to be. And don't let anyone or anybody, whether they're a parent or a teacher or anyone else, tell you any differently. You can be exactly what you want to be.